Good morning. I'm Walter Ford speaking today as a member of our stewardship committee. As we all know, we're nearing the end of our fall stewardship campaign, and I wanted to provide a summary of where we are and where we're heading for the final steps ahead of us. Our focus this season has been on two major themes, building a strong foundation for our future and giving generously from strong feelings of gratitude. The stewardship moment will have three parts. First, the logistics, uh, then a story of mine about two mortgages, and then the ask. So apologies to the folks sitting here today that heard the story about this, uh, that you're going to hear again, uh, maybe 12 years ago at First Church. So the stewardship letter uh, crafted by Charlie and Pastor Liz went out in Friday's mail. Please look for it in your mailbox early this week. I consider it the most important letter you'll get from Granby Congregational Church this year. Along with the letter, you'll find an insert that provides additional information about pledging, the pledge card itself, and a return envelope. Please take some time this week sitting down with your uh, spouse or significant other and uh, ponder your, your giving level and uh, complete your pledge card. You can mail it back to the church. You can bring it next Sunday. Uh, if you miss next Sunday, you can actually bring it any Sunday in the next month, but next Sunday would be great. Or uh, you can stop by the church office and uh, give it to Sue during uh, office hours. So the story of two mortgages. In uh, 1989, Jill and I moved to Granby. We bought a lovely home on Canal Road. We loved the neighborhood. We loved our neighbors. It was a, it was a great place to live, but the property itself uh, really wasn't the best for us. So we uh, worked with Bill Vibbert, a friend and realtor at First Church, spent about three years looking for someplace else to move. We uh, really didn't find anything, so we really had stopped looking. Then in August of 2005, Jill was heading uh, across Day Street South. She was, uh, I think, teaching uh, music at a uh, Bible school at the Holcomb Farm Learning Center. And I think it was that Wednesday, I was out of town on business, and a new property uh, came on the market. So we talked about it that evening. Uh, I got home from uh, my business trip on Friday. For some reason, the realtor was not showing the property that weekend, uh, but they gave us permission to uh, drive there, park, and, and look around. So we did. And uh, it certainly didn't take me long. Once we're up in the backyard, uh, you've got a view of Broad Hill. You've got a view of Weed Hill. And then you've got all the Holcomb uh, Farm open space behind you. So uh, our daughter Hannah was with us, and uh, I kind of said to her, this is going to be our new home. <laughs> so sure enough, uh, we saw the house on Monday. We made an offer. We signed a contract pretty quickly, uh, and that was great. But. Now, that really wasn't a very practical decision because we still needed to sell our house on Canal Road. We had a vacation coming up, and uh, I insisted, I think, and Jill reluctantly agreed, uh, we were going to go forward. So uh, showings in the fall of 05 were pretty slow. Uh, the realtor told us that they're really going to get slow after Thanksgiving, and uh, we pretty soon were stuck paying two mortgages. So the pledge card showed up and uh, <laughs> <laughs> we uh, couldn't really decide what to do. So we left it on the counter where we could see it. And come early December, uh, we had a real heart to heart. And we just, we. <laughs> We decided that our reckless uh, financial decisions should not affect the church's finances. So I think we uh, decided, I don't forget whether we kept our pledge the same or whether we gave a slight increase, but in early December, 
I handed the pledge card to Bill Bentley. I'm sure he was pleased. And uh, <laughs> much to our surprise, two weeks, I think, later, we're just before Christmas, and lo and behold, we get our first offer on the house. We reach a contract in early January, and our days or months of paying two mortgages was, was over. So for me, the whole process was really transformative. We had done the right thing for our church, and then our prayers were answered. And the burden of two mortgages was going to be behind us, and as my sister loved to say, praise the Lord. So now we're at the ask. Every year in early November, everybody is asked to prayerfully consider their pledge of financial support for the next year. Many studies have confirmed that giving generously out of feelings of gratitude lead to more happiness and better health. Consider for a moment the many blessings in all of our lives. Comfortable and warm homes, plentiful and nourishing food, lots of open space in the town of Granby, clean air, clean water, a safe town with a strong sense of community and friends. Contrast this with the plight of over 100 million people around the world that have been displaced from their homes due to wars, floods, wildfires, earthquakes, gang violence, or just plain rotten governments. This number of 100 million was confirmed by the United Nations uh, HCR on uh, June 16th of 22. So by now, I'm sure that number is much higher as conditions, as we all know, have deteriorated in Ukraine and in uh, Israel, Gaza, and the West Bank as that war is raging. So please give generously out of the feelings of gratitude Please give generously so that our church programs can thrive. We are all called as Christians to be the hands and feet of God helping others. If you want further advice, direction on how much to give, feel free to talk with Charlie Kuchenbrod, Pastor Lives, Scott Tracy, or myself anytime. In closing, I'm going to read uh, the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, uh, chapter 9, verse 6 to 8, uh, from the Revised Standard Version. The point is this, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must do as he has made up his mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance so that you may always have enough of everything and may provide in abundance for every good work. Thank you and blessings to all.